Greetings everyone, Ryan Callahan here with Northeast Planning Associates. Springtime is upon us and in this month's segment, we're gonna focus on some financial spring cleaning ideas to make sure your financial house is in good order. Well, we just got out of tax season, the weather's getting nicer, and the last thing you probably wanna think about is your estate. Well, regardless of how old you are or what your goals are, planning for the unexpected is something you'll always wanna make sure is taken care of. This month's question is, how often should I review my estate? First, let's start off with the concept of an estate plan. Recent tax law changes have given many people the idea that because they're not wealthy, they don't need an estate plan because there's no tax consequences. That couldn't be further from the truth. Regardless of your age and wealth, you always want to make sure that in the event of something unexpected were to happen, that your loved ones and your assets will be controlled the way that you want them to. Reviewing an estate is something that should happen whenever there's a life event. Let's start off with a hypothetical example of a young, growing family and how that may evolve over time. Here we have Mary and Joe. Mary and Joe are both 28 years old. They're newlyweds. They just bought a house. They have 401ks at their jobs, and they've now opened joint checking savings accounts. Well, what's something they should consider from an estate planning standpoint? First thing I talk about with a couple like this is a power of attorney. Many people get confused in regards to power of attorneys. The common thought on a power of attorney is, who's going to pull the plug? Yes, that can be the unfortunate responsibility for someone if they have a medical power of attorney. But Mary and Joe might also want to consider a durable power of attorney. What a durable power of attorney allows is for Joe and Mary to act on each other's behalf in the event if one of them was incapacitated. Hypothetical example here, Joe gets in a car accident on his way home from work and he's in a coma. Mary may need to access something that's solely in Joe's name but she doesn't have control as it's not her asset, even though they're married. By making Mary Joe's power of attorney, that gives her the right to make decisions based on Joe being incapacitated. The point is that within this example, this is a young couple that doesn't even have children yet, but the estate planning process is something they should already be considering. Let's fast forward. Joe and Mary now have a child. Here's where the will comes into play. It would be prudent for Mary and Joe to start thinking about who should take responsibility for their child in the event something were to happen to them. A will can control who takes care of the child, what should happen to their assets in the event of an untimely death. Something every parent would want to control as opposed to having the courts decide that for them. Now, fast forward even more, Mary and Joe have two more kids and then years down the road they also have grandchildren. Well, over the years they've accumulated more assets. They now have life insurance, they have a vacation home, and they also have non-qualified accounts, which have accumulated assets. Anytime a life event happens, they'll wanna make sure their will is up to date. It could even make sense to create a trust. What that's gonna do is protect those assets from creditors. Now, let's think about the grandkids for a second. Um, Mary and Joe have uh, three children, each have two kids, so they have six grandkids. Now we're gonna start having the conversation around legacy. In this example, Mary and Joe, they may want to have a discussion on how those assets will pass to the next generation. At death of the second spouse, they may want those assets to go a third, a third, a third to each child. That's known as pro rata from an estate planning standpoint. Now, this is something no parent wants to think about, but you, you may need to. What happens if one of your children predeceases you? Well, if they don't update their will and it stays pro rata, then the assets will be broken down into two as opposed to three because of the passing of that child. Well, what Mary and Joe may have wanted is for that portion to continue to their grandchildren of that child who passed away. Well, if they want that to happen, they have to update um, their will to Persterpes in order for that to happen. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen and heard of a situation where that was never changed, Obviously, it'd be very traumatic if you lost one of your children, so you may not be thinking of updating your estate, and then unfortunately, it can get messy. Our clients review their estate plans annually. When we do our review, it just automatically happens. But at a minimum, anytime you have a life change, example, you have a child, you make a major purchase, you have grandchildren, there's death to a loved one, those are the times you wanna be certain, once again, your financial house is in good order. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. Keep sending those questions our way, 833-CAL-PLAN, that's 833-225-7526, or visit our website, www.callahanplans.com. 
We'll see you on the next video. Take care.